Okay, today we're going to take a look at solving radical equations. Um, and we're going to take a look at two methods. This first method is going to be where we work on isolating the radical. All right, now what I mean by that, in this first example, looking, uh, making the equation, uh, the equal sign, the center of the equation, over here on the left, the radical is not isolated because it has an extra little minus 3 sitting on the same side of the equation with it. So it is not yet isolated. Whereas if you look at this example over here, equal sign being the middle of the equation, on the left-hand side, the radical is already isolated because there is nothing being multiplied to it and or nothing added or subtracted outside the radical. So this one's already isolated. All right. Um, so just telling the difference between when a radical is isolated and when it is not. All right. So in this first example here, square root of 3, square root of x minus 3 equals 4. That minus 3 we need to isolate the radical, so we need to do the opposite, get it to the other side of the equation, just like we have always done. All right, so a minus 3, doing the opposite there would be adding 3, and then adding 3, you do it to both sides of the equation, crosses out there on the left-hand side. So then I have the square root of x is equal to a 7. All right, now, um, as with solving any type of equation, you always do the opposite of what you see. So that's why we saw a subtract 3, so then we added 3. All right, right here I see the square root of x. The opposite of taking the square root of a number is squaring a number. So my inverse operation in this step right here would be to square both sides of the equation. All right, now undoing, when an operation undoes the other one, they're inverse operations, then they get rid of each other basically. That minus 3 plus 3 got rid of each other. The square root and the squaring right there gets rid of each other. So that goes away, which is what we want to happen. That's going to leave us with an x on this side of the equation. And then um, 7 squared is going to be 49. Okay, so x equals 49. All right, now what you need to do on each one of these then is to also go through a check to make sure that your solution actually works. All right, so I've come up with x equals 49. I need to see if that works. So I'm going to plug it back into my original equation, and I'm just going to check to see if it works. Is the square root of 49 minus 3, is that equal to 4? All right, well, square root of 49 is 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. So does it match? Yes, I've got 4 is equal to 4. So it does match. All right, And it checks, so I know this is a solution. All right, If I would solve the equation and I would get x equal a number and I would plug the number back into the equation and it not equal my original equation in there, then that would um, be a no solution. It would be what's called an extraneous root, which we'll get into that in another example here a little bit later. Okay, uh, for this second example right here, all right, the square root is already isolated, so I don't have to do anything first like I did in this first example. I don't have to get rid of numbers or anything. I can just immediately go to squaring both sides because that square root right there is isolated on that side of the equation. So I'm going to immediately square both sides. All right, when I do that, the square root and the square goes away because they're inverse operations of each other. So leaving on the left-hand side, that leaves me with an x minus 3. And on the right-hand side, 4 squared four, four times 4 is 16. All right, now, once you get down to there, that's just a standard one-step equation. You can add 3 to both sides and solve your equation just like you always have. So then that's going to be x equal 19. Okay, again, you really should go through the check process. All right, you're going to check to see if that answer really does work. So I'm going to take 19. I'm going to plug it back in where that x is. So I'm going to have the square root of 19 minus 3. And I'm going to ask myself, is that equal to 4? Well, 19 minus 3 is going to give me a 16. So square root of 16, is that equal to 4? Yes, it is, because square root of 16 does equal 4. So again, um, it does work, but you are running that check just to make sure. All right, now, for method 2, there is another way to solve radical expressions here. Okay, um, if you have a square root on both sides of the um, equal sign, then I can immediately go to squaring both sides. That's going to get rid of the radical. All right, so that's another way to do it. And even though on this example right here, I only have a square root over here, I just have a plain number on this side, I can still immediately go to squaring both sides and get rid of that. 
All right, so on this example, that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I've got a radical on both sides, and it's isolated on both sides. I'm going to square the left-hand side. I'm going to square the right-hand side. All right, what that's going to do, square root and the square sign is going to go away on the left. That's also going to happen on the other one, square root, and the square is going to go away. So that will leave me with a 3x minus 2 is equal to an x plus 6. It just leaves what's underneath the radicals. All right, and as you recall, uh, solving an equation with x on both sides, this is uh, really back at the very beginning of the year, that x you need to move over to the other side. So I can subtract x from both sides of the equation. Well, let's go ahead and do this in two steps. Um, that's going to give me a 2x minus 2 equals 6. All right, now I'm down to a two-step equation. I can add 2 to both sides of the equation. Those 2's go away. 2x equals 8. Divide both sides by 2. So this is um, after you get rid of your radical, you're solving equations just like you always have. x equals 4. Okay. Now here again, you need to run a check and see if this really does work. All right. So when you're checking on this one, <clears throat> x equals 4, you have an x in both sides of the equal sign there. you got one on the right, one on the left. You need to plug it into both places. So I need to check to see is 3 times 4 minus 2 square root, is that equal to when I take the square root of 4 plus 6. All right, doing a little bit of math here. Uh, 3 times 4 is 12 minus 2 is going to give me a radical 10. All right, is that equal to 4 plus 6 over there is a square root 10. And again, it worked. Yes, it is. Square root of 10 is equal to square root of 10. I don't need to know the decimal. I just need to know that those two values are equal. So I'm still good to go. That's a solution. All right, for my last example here, um, again, the radical is isolated, all right, and I don't happen to have one on both sides, but that's okay. This idea of immediately squaring both sides of the equation is going to do it. It's going to get rid of that. So I'm going to square the second, uh, first side of the equation. I'm going to square the second side of the equation. That square root and the square is going to go away. All right, now what this one does, x squared is x squared equals x plus 6. All right, now as soon as you see this x squared in here, you ought to be thinking, oh, this is a quadratic. All right, so no longer just, you know, linear equations where we can solve and get a single answer. All right, now I have a quadratic. This is going to be the U-shaped parabola. All right. Now, lots of different ways. I could choose to solve this. Um, I could solve it by factoring. That would be one way, and I'm actually going to try that first and hope that works. Um, I could also do quadratic formula if I needed to. If it doesn't factor, you would have to go to the quadratic formula since it's quadratic. All right. Um, and then um, if you're, you've done this, the completing the square, you can also complete the square. So let's just put complete the square. That's a third method. It's uh, oftentimes done in Algebra 1, and if not, it's definitely done in an Algebra 2 class. All right, um, since I want to try the factoring first, I'm going to move all the terms to the left because I would really like this leading coefficient to remain a positive 1. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I'm going to have an x squared minus x minus 6, and then equals 0 because I moved everything over there to the left. All right, and then we're going to do the guess and check. All right, to try to solve this, it's a leading uh, coefficient 1 there on that trinomial, so I know I'm going to have an x and an x. If you really need to make the box, you can. All right, you would need to do the product of a negative 6, and you would want the sum of a negative 1 there. Okay, and if you need to make a little chart, you can do that and start running through things. Uh, right off the bat, though, I think a 2 and 3 is going to work, so you might try a negative 2 and a positive 3. All right, doing that and adding, I get a positive 1. That's not what I needed, so switch up your signs. A positive 2 and a negative 3, that will give you the negative 1. So if you've got to factor it um, using a box method like that to do your trial and error, that's fine, too. All right, but we've decided this works, so I'm going to have a plus 2 and a minus 3. All right, and then if you recall, once you factor and you're trying to solve a quadratic equation that you have factored, you set both of them equal to 0. So x plus 2 equals 0. Solve that simple little equation there. x equals negative 2. And then I have another possibility. x plus, um, or excuse me, x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides. x equals 3. So I have two possible answers here. x can equal negative 2. x 
can equal 3. All right, so I definitely have to do the check. I need to check each of those values in that original equation to see which one's going to work. Maybe neither of them will. Maybe one of them will. Maybe both of them will. All right, so for my check, all right, let's check the negative 2 first. All right, so I need to check, is negative 2 equal to the square root of negative 2 plus 6? Okay, so square root of this will be um, 4. And is that equal? Okay, well, I can see that's not. The square root of 4 is going to give me a 2. All right, that is not equal. All right, so then this one is not going to work. Okay, now let's try plugging in our 3. 3 on the left-hand side, is that going to be equal to the square root of 3 plus 6? All right, 3 plus 6 is going to give me a 9 on that side. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 does equal 3, so this one checks. So this is my only answer right there. All right, and I used the word earlier when we were on the first page. Um, this right here is called an extraneous root. Extraneous root. All right, it's a, an extraneous solution, an extraneous root. All right, it did not work. All right, when we plugged it back into the equation. And that's going to happen on some of your square roots. All right, so um, four examples of how you can solve a radical equation. All right, and if you really like the video, go ahead and give me a like down in the corner. Thanks.